North Korea possesses one of the biggest number of submarines in the global list, although most of them are considered to be outdated. Now, their green submarines are a global hit because they cannot be explained and have left the analysts of the world puzzled. But why? The standard color that most submarines are painted in is black, particularly due to their operations in the depths of the Earth seas. However, North Korea does not adhere to this and has green colored submarines. This pick might just be seen as a quirk, or a representation of the fluctuating and mysterious actions of the North Korean armed forces, particularly since North Korea is seen as being shrouded and peculiar when it comes to its military strategies. But what emanates from these green submarines that makes them a lurking hatred to the whole wide world? The geographic location of North Korea on the Korean Peninsula is special regarding the strategies and militaries, but mainly because of its naval facilities. The peninsula is separated by the enemy territories, South Korea and Japan, which present an afflicting challenge to complementary naval movements in the seas of the peninsula's east and west. North Korea borders the Yellow Sea to the west, which is known to be relatively shallow and volatile. Such seawater colors ranging from turquoise to light brown are attributed to very high sediments content, especially with an inflow of water from such rivers as the Yellow River, among others. This natural haze, while being a navigational hazard, is also somewhat of a protection, meaning it's less conducive to heavy maritime usage or the staging of large numbers of submarines. This area can be considered as fairly safe for North Koreans considering that China remains one of its friends. Therefore, North Korea's large submarines are not normally deployed in the Yellow Sea because these shallow waters are not deep enough to accommodate them. Rather, the state employs smaller and inconspicuous submarines which can maneuver easily in these shallow waters. On the other hand, there is the East Sea, otherwise known as the Sea of Japan. On the eastern coast of the peninsula, the conditions are far different. It lies adjacent to the enemies Japan and South Korea and on the sea which is under the observation of the interested America. The East Sea is deeper than the Yellow Sea, which forms the kind of environment fit for big and complex submarines. It is also large and affords concealment as well as Lebensraum for operations for NOR submarines, which remains the largest as well as the modern among all naval forces. The conditions of water in the East Sea where the cold water from the north mixes with water from the south is very favorable for marine life. This produces so many planktons which in turn increases the ecology of the reefs while also increasing the green light color of the water. And so, the nature of the naval actions by North Korea has changed to fit these situations. This is why some of the North Korean submarines are painted green on the top part as to reduce their profile and in order to not be picked by ASW aircraft. Such submarines which are used in such areas where the water mixes are faced with the problem of managing the sea surface temperature in order to avoid sighting. Perhaps green paint is used to either reflect or absorb various wavelengths of heat now that ties into heat transfer concerning the hull of the submarine. By influencing the thermal properties of the submarine surface, green paint might help in minimizing heat signatures which is crucial for maintaining stealth in waters with fluctuating temperatures. This thermal regulation aspect of paint could contribute to reducing the submarine's visibility to infrared and thermal detection systems. Another practical reason for the green coloration might be its effectiveness in combating corrosion. The East Sea's water chemistry, including its salinity and presence of various minerals and organic materials, can increase the corrosive effects on submarine hulls. Paints containing specific additives, such as anti-corrosive agents, are necessary for protecting submarines from rust and deterioration. Green paint may include these protective compounds, offering better resistance to harsh marine environment. By preventing or reducing the rate of hull degradation, North Korea can increase the operational life of its submarines and maintain their structural wholeness over time. North Korea's green submarines are believed to use cutting edge technologies that improve their stealth capabilities and operational effectiveness. This includes the use of air independent propulsion systems which allow submarines to remain submerged for longer periods without needing to surface. AIP technology causes a major increase in the submarine's life and operational range making it more difficult to detect and track. The consequences of such advancements are extremely tactical. Submarines with AIP systems can cruise longer patrols and strike missions without the need for frequent resurfacing. This in turn increases their staying time in air zones which consequently increases their chances of launching surprise attacks or being unidentified. 
For North Korea, which has a history of challenging actions and aggressive rhetoric, these submarines could be used in their favor and dominate power beyond the continent. North Korea's attention on submarine warfare in the East Sea is a proof of its asymmetric military strategy. Given its relative naval inferiority compared to its neighbors in the United States, North Korea relies on its submarines to offset this disadvantage. Submarines are a powerful tool of threatening enemy naval vessels, merchant ships, and even coastal installations. The deep, plankton-rich waters of the East Sea provide an ideal environment for these submarines to operate with a reduced risk of detection. Furthermore, the determined arrangement of the North Korea submarine fleet in the East Sea demonstrates the value of this maritime area in terms of regional security. The East Sea is a vital region to North Korea, South Korea, Japan, and also the United States, which all have significant naval capabilities in that zone. North Korean submarines' presence complicates further what is already an explosive military standoff in Northeast Asia. The deployment strategies of North Korean submarines in the East Sea could be due to several factors of technological advantages, geographical aspects, and strategic plans. Consider a brief run through the types of North Korean submarines. Coastal submarines, SSCs for coastal warfare, mini submarines, SSMs for shallow water operations, and finally ballistic missile submarines for strategic attacks. And so, some of these submarines have green paint which is an improved adaptation since green is used on these submarines to help them in their spying activities because they do not want to be seen by enemies. Furthermore, it highlights the possibility of the North Korean Navy strategy, the usage of submarines, it corresponds to the general concept of the North Korean military force that developed tactics of asymmetric warfare. The submersible, some of which the North Koreans use, are fitted with torpedoes and mines and sometimes even ballistic missile systems, hence the submersible is a very good weapon offensively and defensively. This factor of creeping on an opponent from the sea bottom presents a powerful aspect of surprise and force, which do not give a slight chance to the adversary's planned tactics. Thus, the Yellow Sea and the East Sea are not simply associated with the military strategies. These bodies of water also provide economical benefits. For instance, there is an aspect such as fishing and any other facility that is found deep in the water. Therefore, the fishing industry of the East Sea is enriched due to the planktonic life and to some extent cater the food requirements of the region. Nevertheless, the existence of such militarized waters, particularly due to North Korea's submarine, has that threat which has destabilized the economy of the region by hindering the commercial fishing and the aqua business and trade channels. For example, Israel's dolphin-class submarines are painted blue to match the Mediterranean Sea color. The Mediterranean, known for its clear blue waters, provide an ideal backdrop for such a color scheme. The blue camouflage helps these submarines blend into the sea, making them less visible against the backdrop of the open ocean. The Dolphin-class submarines, designed for strategic and tactical roles, benefit significantly from this color scheme, which is particularly effective in reducing visibility during operations near the surface or while conducting covert missions. The significance of North Korea's naval strategies as a geopolitical factor cannot be underestimated. North Korean submarines in the East Sea is a presence that necessitates a proper response from neighboring nations and their allies. This has led to increased naval patrols, advanced ASW operations, and the deployment of sophisticated maritime surveillance systems by South Korea, Japan, and the United States. The constant seek and pursuit game in these waters are a source of danger of accidental encounters or miscalculations that can turn into larger conflicts. North Korea's use of submarines in the East Sea is also showing its broader strategic goal to maintain a credible threat capability. Through the submarine fleet, its ability to be a surprise player on the naval stage demands a separate unit capable of defending. Thus, decreasing their vulnerability against Korea's military capabilities is a major asset for the submarine fleet so that the North can even show the military might and capacity of its sea power. The tactic of ambiguity muddles the adversary's questions and gives them less edge, thus improving North Korea's general safety circumstances. The camouflage of the submarines is one of the main components of modern naval strategy as it helps submarines blend into their operational environments and thus minimize their detection. Different countries employ different types of camouflage techniques according to the conditions of the waters where their submarines are used to, thus increasing their efficiency and survivability in various maritime environments. Likewise, the Iranian Ghadir-class submarines are built by Iran 
and are a development of North Korea's Yono class and also masters of camouflage suited to local conditions. The Gadir class submarines are fairly heavily armed and designed for multi-purpose use ranging from coast guard, reconnaissance, anti-shipping vessels, and so on. These submarines are largely painted in colors taking coloration of the rather dusky, opaque waters of Persian Gulf and the Arabian Sea. Color patterns in these submarines enable them to blend with the region's brackish and sediment-laden waters, which can be characterized by varying visibility. This camouflage is especially needed in presently colored Persian Gulf, the greenish-brown coloration of which is caused by water sill and algae and where the submarine paint camouflage may be best matched. Such a practice of adapting the submarine camouflage to the local water nature is not illustrated by these examples alone. Submarines used in different parts of the world have different colors and patterns in order to camouflage. For instance, the submersibles in the Arctic zone of the World Ocean might choose to apply white or light gray coloring in order to resemble the frozen sea and the snow. On the other hand, those using tropical may have coats of green or blue colors that blend in with the shades of corals of the tropic waters. The choice of green might also be down to other factors such as maybe an aesthetic or cultural influence. It is also important to note that in some cases, colors are chosen not only for the practical characteristics, but also due to some references to symbolic or national identification reasons. Green may be selected to represent this entire area because of various cultural musical signs that are significant to North Korea. They may have intended such symbols in order to improve morale and to unify the military forces and give them a sense of identity. Camouflage equipment in submarines is a doctrine of naval concealment and stealth which involves processes like the reduction of the underwater noise, the shape of the submarine's hull, and the use of electronic countermeasures. The objective is to minimize the chances of being picked by the enemy sonar and other reconnaissance devices. Camouflage supports these measures as it takes into consideration the visual detection that is less vital compared to the acoustic visibility, but is still a concern when the submarines maneuver near the surface. Besides the paint scheme, some submarines can also use other features to disrupt their outline or to camouflage them against the background. These adaptations are vital in ensuring minimum security threats in the performance of its actions within the operational facilities and to avoid being noticed through sight or by any other instrument. They remain as constantly reviewed and modified with regards to new inventions in the detection systems. In the periods of the Second World War, the closed formations of submarines of the U.S. Navy used different kinds of camouflage to increase their concealment and chances of survival. At first, submarines began to be painted in light gray color as the selected option was best one for fogging. The shade of light gray was useful at hiding in the fog of the northern climates and coastal sections of the world where submarines would be utilized. The objective was to camouflage the submarines with the fog and haze that might hinder the visual perception of the submarines at a given point in time, particularly during hours of the day of clear sea surface navigation and interactions with other vessels. But the state of marine combat changed and with the development of more sophisticated means of reconnaissance, the US Navy changed their concept of camouflage. They found out that dark blue was the better color for camouflaging submarines despite the type of aquatic landscape. The color dark blue enabled the submarines to merge with the depth blacker waters of the deep sea, especially in the night. However, dark blue paint had some issues. This paint was not long lasting in that when applied on the surface exposed to the marine environment such as water and sun, the paint peeled off easily. This fast degradation affected the camouflage aspect because the material wore out quickly, making it indispensable to create a long lasting one. As a result of such threats, the US Navy shifted to black paint for submarines. Black paint was also tougher than its white counterparts in terms of resistance to environmental conditions and namely, seawater and sun exposure. Besides solving the problem of paint fading, the utilization of black paint also had clear and rather rational advantages in terms of maintenance and further usage of the structure. Black paint showed to be more functional and useful for the submarines which require camouflage appearance for longer durations. Today, most modern submarines are black, although not for the reason one might initially think. The black color is mainly as a result of the incorporation of rubber tiles that are embedded with carbon black on their surface. First of all, they improve the hull's mechanical characteristics and thus the durability of physical structure of the submarine. Secondly, and probably the most important, the carbon black in the rubber tiles enhances the level of sound attenuation. This characteristic can be deemed highly essential in the current submarines since the main component of stealth is the minimization of noise. Hence, 
By reducing noise output of the submarine, noise produced by equipment and motion of water, the submarine becomes less audible to the enemy's sonar systems. In the same regard, other aspects in which Navy tradition has influenced the design of the submarine, particularly the ship, is through the change of color. Originally submarines and ships were red at the bottom, this was because of the use of anti-fouling paint containing copper oxide on ships. Copper oxide was used as an anti-fouling agent, which when coated on surfaces of ships and submarines, reduced formation of algae and barnacles that were invasive to the ships and resulted in drag. All the three materials that were applied were of red color, with the purpose of the red color being to determine the clean state of the hull. However, the effects on the environment have negated the use of such coating from reducing it. Newer regulations and raising consciousness of the environment have shifted the focus to far less harmful and significantly more sustainable anti-fouling methods. North Korea now has one of the largest submarine forces. The numbers are believed to be over 70. This large fleet forms one of the Navy resources of the country, although several of the submarines are rather old. Among these, the Romeo-class submarines are relatively quite famous. The diesel-electric propelled underwater vessels resembles those of the Cold War technologies that North Korea presumably obtained from the Soviet in the 1950s and the 1960s. Indeed, the Romeo submarines, many of which there were, were slow-moving and noisy, especially when compared to the modern submarine. They need to surface or to snorkel so as to recharge their batteries through their diesel-electric propulsion system, and hence they are more visible. However, Romeo-class submarines are still existent, posing a threat particularly to single-hull commercial sailors. Although they have large hulls and while they carry substantial guns, even though this is not top of the line, they offer torpedoes and mines that it can use in civilian and military vessels. Probably one of the reasons for such a decision is that the ability to launch a strike from the position submerged below the waterline is still a potent force, even if the said submarine is slow and loud by modern standards. The green-colored submarines that are attributed to North Korea are a nightmare because it challenges the non-proliferation trends of the world and interrupts the existing security systems of the world as well. North Korea's experience in the development of submarine technology also creates the risk of their distribution or proliferation to other unstable countries or terrorists. The sharing of already developed military machinery may significantly further world insecurity since such agencies might use it unsteadying the whole world. It may also prove difficult to monitor and contain the submarine-based missile system as the organizations take the application of their systems to the external world. About the green submarine capability, it is said that it can attack currently existing navies and missile defense systems directly. Thanks to the current plans and the equipment of the conventional defense, it can be clearly seen that it can be ineffective in combating these high-tech submarines thereby leading to the creation of a new arms race. This increase of the military parity and competition in developing the technology could distract some of the resources which can be invested in prime activities such as economical growth and enhancing the quality of life for needy people within the society. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more content like this.